Please welcome to the stage the Administrator of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Deanne Criswell. All right, good morning, everybody. It's such an honor to be able to participate uh, with everybody today for the 2023 White House Tribal Summit. I first just want to thank the Biden-Harris administration for continuing this important convening and for the continued commitment to working government to government with all tribal nations. Today, I'm really proud to reflect on the progress that we at FEMA have been making over the past year to continue to build the FEMA that Indian country needs and deserves. Together, we have made incredible strides, but we do have a lot of work yet to do. We want to be able to make sure that we at FEMA are living up to our treaty and trust responsibilities. This morning, I do want to take an opportunity to update you on some of the work that we are doing to better meet the needs of tribal nations throughout, the, throughout Indian country. First, I'm going to talk about the new approach we are taking to protect tribal nation sovereignty. Second, I'll briefly explain the work that we are doing to improve access to FEMA resources for tribal nations. And last but not least, I'll tell you more about the work that we are doing to ensure you always have a seat at the table. So let me start with our new approach. FEMA is fully committed to supporting and strengthening the sovereignty of tribal nations and protecting your cultural heritage. Today, I'm excited to announce updates to our FEMA's recovery policies that will reflect that support. First and foremost, FEMA will now accept Tribal Nations Self-Certified Damage Assessments, Scope of Work for Restoration, and Estimated Costs for Traditional Tribal Residences or Ceremonial Buildings. We know that we, as a federal agency, are not always equipped to appropriately understand the cost of repairing pueblos, longhouses, or other traditional buildings because our modern standards don't take your traditional knowledge or methods into account. This change, it reflects feedback that we have heard directly from tribal nations and is designed to better assist you and your tribal citizens in repairing traditional homes and ceremonial buildings. We will also no longer require site inspections, photos, site maps, or specific location details of damage that has been done to tribal sacred sites to ensure that your culturally sensitive data and locations remain protected. We're excited to implement these updates to further support Indian country and strengthen your sovereignty. Second, I wanna talk about how we are working to increase accessibility to FEMA programs, tools, and services for tribal nations who need them. We have heard during many of our consultations this year that there was confusion over which roadways on tribal lands were eligible to be repaired through FEMA public assistance funding. This was a big roadblock, both literally and figuratively, for tribal nations who need vital roadways repaired during and after a disaster. So I'm excited to say that we can now clarify that all of these roads, whether they are BIA or DOT built or maintained, are all eligible under our public assistance program. And we have also updated our documentation process for memorandum of understanding and mutual aid agreements to clarify your eligibility for mutual aid reimbursements when you help a fellow tribal nation or non-tribal government during a disaster. And thanks to all of your feedback, we have also been working to improve our tribal nation grant programs to ensure that they are meeting the needs of your individual nations. I'm also really excited to announce the launch of our new FEMA Tribal Affairs Hub, something else that you have all asked for. 
This new hub is going to serve as a one-stop shop where you can learn more about our grants, find information about the tribal declaration process, and even register for our ninth annual Tribal Nations Training Week. All you have to do is search FEMA Tribal Affairs Hub online and you will find this critical new resource. All of these updates to our policies, to our resources, to the hub, they were all driven by conversations with all of you. We would not have been able to make these adjustments without your feedback, which leads me to my third update, how we are working to ensure that you always have a seat at our table. In 2024, FEMA will increase the Tribal Nation participation in our public assistance working sessions and steering committees to ensure that your voices are always heard and your input is included continuously. We are working to hire more staff from Indian Country while also building tribal awareness and cultural sensitivity across our workforce. And I am also excited to announce that this year began the important work of updating the Tribal Disaster Declaration Guide. This is a pathway for your nations to request a federal disaster declaration from the president to access the disaster relief funding. My team and I, we are going to be providing updates on the progress to the Tribal Declaration's guidance and seeking additional input at our upcoming breakout session, which is just across the hall and will begin um, at 10.50 in the library. I hope to see many of you there to wrap up a productive year of working in our government-to-government -government manner to strengthen your needs for nations in the next seven generations. I'm really excited and looking forward to this coming year of new ideas as well as meaningful conversations. And you do have my sincere commitment that we at FEMA will continue our hard work to become an, the agency that Indian country needs and deserves. I wanna thank you again for the opportunity to speak with all of you today, for sharing your experiences, your expertise, and your inputs. I hope you have a great rest of your summit and I look forward to hopefully seeing some of you at our breakout session later today. Thank you very much.